um, on Zoom, but for our in-person folks, we have treats. This is an opportunity to connect, and it looks like right now on the Zoom, we have 57 folks. So together, we are collaboratively a large group. We had about 130 people register, so um, we're really glad to welcome Emma Mesa Melendez, uh, Melendez, who's our Director of Communications, to record this. So anybody that registered that wasn't able to come will be able to get a, a wonderful recording. You'll be able to go back and watch it and share it with your colleagues. And mostly, um, uh, and I guess maybe I should have started with, hi, I'm Meredith Lewis. I'm the Director of Community Impact and Partnerships here. Sometimes I'm very down to business. Um, mostly, I'm really excited to welcome Becca Cooling, who runs the Human Service Forum. Um, uh, as, as a very small team, often of, of one with volunteers and vendors and some other supports, um, they have been implementing Catch a Fire for a few years locally, and we're really excited to be able to partner with the, um, the Davis Family Foundation and the Beverage Family Foundation to really open this up to more organizations in the area. And we collectively, as the funders, are just um, as much as we can to support you and your needs and your growth. We want to do whatever we can. So we're really excited to be here. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Becca. For folks on the Zoom, as you have questions, put them in the chat. And when we get to the question part, we will do our hybrid thing. Absolutely. So good morning, everyone. Uh, as, as mentioned, my name is Becca Kulong. I'm the Executive Director of the Human Service Forum. Um, if you have questions as I'm talking, feel free, raise your hand, stop me, say I'm online. Um, with my online friends, if there are uh, fur babies or children or spouses who walk through the screens, we honor all of them. So that's great. Feel free to introduce them to us in the chat. That would be lovely. Um, I will check it later so I can find out about all of the wonderful fur friends who joined us also. Um, children are good too, but fur friends are better. So um, I am uh, the executive director of a small organization, as Meredith said. We're actually strikingly larger than that. We're three people. Um, and we have been uh, around since 1986, originally part of United Way, who's representing at the end of the table. Hi, United Way. Um, but in uh, 2011, we became our own organization, and our priority is providing networking and training to nonprofits all across Western Mass. So that is what we do. We're a member organization. Um, with that being said, we have a no member left behind policy, so if people need us, they reach out to us and we figure out how to make that work. So um, we don't think you gatekeep community, and certainly um, that is something that's important to us um, and the mission that we move forward with. So a few years ago, Catch a Fire came to our attention. Um, it is an online platform that connects nonprofits with pro bono consultants all over the world. Has anyone who is here or online had any experience with Catch a Fire at this point? Yeah, cool. All right, fun. Um, so we started using it about two and a half years ago. Um, we have had this access for a couple of years, and one of the reasons that some of you have, have not yet heard about it until now and are just hearing about it now is that originally we had a limited number of organizations that we could give access to. Um, it is a benefit of membership of HSF in order to use it, so I'm going to tell you that you do have to be a member, but I'm also going to tell you that for the rest of this program year, you get membership included with your usage of Catch a Fire. So nobody in this room is going to try to sell you anything. It's not what I'm here for. I, I don't work for Catch a Fire. I want to make that really clear also. Um, I am only here to give presents today. This is all about gifts, uh, gifts that were given by our three foundations that step forward, uh, that come through us. And at the end of this program year, when that free membership runs out and you call me and say, well, that was great, but we can't really do this anymore. As I said at the beginning, no organization left behind. We will work things out with you, okay? So when we get to the end of our fiscal year, which is the end of June, we'll just have a conversation, okay? So nobody needs to feel pressured or that anybody is gonna be reaching into your pockets. I wanna make that really clear before I start any of the rest of it uh, because that's really important. So again, Catch a Fire is this platform. It connects us to pro bono <laughs> consultants that help us with the things that we need done. We are a small organization. We do not have a lot of resources. Um, resource scarcity is one of the biggest problems that we have in the human service world as far as I am concerned. Um, we have plenty of people who need our help. We just don't have the resources we need to help all of the people who need the help. That's it. These are some resources. So when this was first offered to us, we were learning about it from the sales staff and they were telling us all sorts of things. And the first thing I asked them to do was let me try it because if I was going to go out and try to get other people to use it, I wanted to know what it was all about. And so I thought to myself, I may only get to do one project in the world. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the projects that we've done and the projects that are available, and I'm going to show you the platform. So the very first project I did, because I thought I might only have one, <laughs> was a rebranding. I said, we're going to rebrand our organization. Now, an organization of my size is never going to have an opportunity to do that. 
That's a twenty to thirty thousand dollar project at a bare minimum. We're never going to be able to do that. So I'm like, well, let's try it. So I went onto this platform. I put my project in. And I'm going to show you how easy that is to do. And we connected with a marketing consultant um, out of Detroit, Michigan. And he took us through an entire rebranding pr process. We got new logos. We got new fonts. We got new colors. He updated our website. Um, we got letterhead. We got business cards. We, all of the things. It cost us zero dollars. We paid nothing for this. Now, Catch a Fire is not free, as you heard. Our foundations are paying for it, so it's not free for me. It's free for you. I went out and got grant money so that we all could use it. Okay. The consultants on here do not get paid. They are doing this. Um, because they want to do good things for the world. Some of them are doing it because they want to build their own personal portfolios. This particular gentleman worked for a very large marketing firm, and so none of his work was his. So when he wanted to form his own work, he didn't have a portfolio that he could show people because the work he made for the company belonged to the company. The work he did for me belonged to him. Um, he linked his website to our website. We got more usage on our website. People went to check it out. Kind of cool. People in Detroit, Michigan know who we are. That's neat. Um, there was a time where we're like, do more people in Detroit know about us than people here in Springfield? Gee, I hope not. Um, but that was something that came of it. We ended up with this. And, and then our next project, so we're like, this is great. We're going to keep going. As long as they haven't noticed we're still on here, we're going to go. And um, one of the things when he updated our website is he came back to me and he said, look, I made your website look really nice. I put a pretty dress on it. But there's 18 levels of code underneath. I don't know how many of you t deal with your own websites, but you know that you just keep coding on top of coding. I see a face here that understands exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and he said, this is why your website is slow. This is why every time people click on anything, they end up leaving because it takes, you know, God forbid, three seconds to get to the next page. Um, but three seconds in website world is 20 years. So we went online and we went back to Catch a Fire and we found a gentleman on here who recoded the entire back end of our website. He got rid of all of the other dresses and just left us with our website. But we don't have an IT department. We're very small. And every time our web company says it's time to update, we panic because every time we hit the update button, something goes wrong and we don't know how to fix it. So I reached out to this, this gentleman. His name is William. He's down in Washington, DC. And whereas he's not allowed to solicit me for work from this, he's just here to be a volunteer, I'm allowed to solicit him for work. So I said to him, William, you now know my website better than anybody else knows my website on the back end. Would you be willing for me to pay you hourly when I need an update done? And he said, absolutely. And I said, OK, well, what's your hourly rate? And because we met through this platform, he gave me a ridiculously low hourly rate that I was so low I was uncomfortable with it, and I offered him more. Um, and maybe three or four times a year, I send him an email. Hey, William, it's Becca. Could you go onto our website and just do the updates? Or something is going wrong. We're not sure what it is. He does it. He sends me an invoice for still a ridiculously low amount of money, <laughs> and we're able to have that back-end support that we never had before. So when, we talk, when I talk about Catch a Fire, it really is also sort of what I say from the sublime to the ridiculous. So that, that work in and of itself was probably around $35,000 worth of work minimum that was done for us at no cost. Um, they did not expect anything in return. They don't want anything from me. They are here to do this work. We also just ran an entire strategic plan using consultants that we found on Catch a Fire, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that. Um, pretty amazing. No cost to us. And then we also do what I like to refer to as the ridiculous. So um, we do a supervisory series. We train your organizations, have new supervisors, we train them for you. Um, we give a certificate at the end, a certificate of completion. I went to look at our certificate one day, and it looked like a high school diploma from 1984. And I said, well, we just did this whole brand. We look so much better. This is so great. And this is what we're putting out into the world. Now, I can make a new certificate. Everybody who's ever worked in the human services at some point had to make a certificate or a flyer or something. We've all done it. But it's going to take me probably about three hours or so to get through something like that because I'm going to nitpick at it and I want it to look nice and all these things. Instead, I went on to Catch a Fire. And again, I'm going to show you the process in a minute. I posted a project. A gentleman in Pakistan applied for it. Um, we had a five-minute meeting where I talked to him about what I wanted. I sent him our branded materials. I sent him our old certificate. Um, and by the next morning, he sent me a new updated certificate. So approximately 15 minutes of my time went into this process. One of the big things that people say is, I don't have time to do this. And I say, and it sounds so jargony, and I hate saying it this way, and i got to figure out a new way, but you don't have time not to do this. I bought three hours of my time back by doing this. And the things that I could accomplish in those three hours. Now, if you're a larger organization, you know, I talked to some executive teams at some larger organizations. They said to me, Becca, I have a marketing department. It's not my problem. And I said, do your program directors have a marketing department that they can go in 
and have a flyer made? Well, no, they have to do that. All right, well, do you want your program director making a flyer or do you want your program director running your program? Which is a more efficient use of their time? Oh, well, we want them running their program. Great, then give them Catch a Fire. Because the thing about Catch a Fire is that when your organization has access, you can give as many people in your organization as you want access. Board members, volunteers, staff members, everybody. There is not a limit to the number of users you can add in your account. They each get their own accounts. And there is not a limited number of projects that you can do. In the last two and a half years, HSF has done 20 projects using Catch a Fire. Because the other projects that I want to talk about briefly, and then I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about with this, this platform, um, is that we do data projects. And again, I'm a small org. We heard me say that at the beginning. And I have a board who will look at me and say, you know what would be really interesting to know? Many of you have had heard that from your board. It would be great if we knew. And I look at them and go, yeah, that would be really interesting to know. You're right. And then they stare at me, and I stare at them, and we all laugh, and then I walk away. Because I don't have time for that, nor do I have the skill set for it. I am not a data person. That's a job. That's a thing that people do. And it takes extensive periods of time. So we've always laughed about it for years. And then the other day, they said to me, you know what would be great if we knew? And I went, oh, what would be great if we knew? And then I went on to Catch a Fire, and I found a wonderful person. And they found that information for me. And they put together a whole database of the information that I was looking for. And they made it nice and it was really pretty and it's very easy to use. And it took about 20 minutes of my time to interview them, tell them what I wanted. And now I have it. I had an, an organization reach out to us the day before, well, excuse me, the week before Giving Tuesday. I wish they had reached out a little bit earlier. And they said to me, does HSF have a list of businesses that match donations of their staff if their staff makes a charitable donation? said, we don't, but that would be really interesting to know because how useful would that be for all of you to be able to then mark it out? By the way, do you work for one of these companies? If so, make sure that you fill out your match form with that company when you make your donation to us. That's more money. That's maybe twice as much money as you were going to get. We now have that list. Um, I did nothing to get it other than ask this wonderful gentleman. And I have also found that this gentleman um, really liked working with us. He lives in Portland, Oregon. He is, works in data analytics for Google, so he knows what he's doing. And he also has um, extensive resources that I do not have access to, but he does. And he uses those resources. And he said to me, I really like working with you. Every time you have a data project, let me know that you're about to post a project and I'll go pick it up. So he and I have now done four data projects together. He's working on one right now as we speak. So I don't even have to do the interview process with him anymore. I just send him a message. Hey, Ankit, I want to do a project. Great, let me know what it is. Because the data that I'm looking for is so nothing compared to the data that he's used to having to gather that it takes him a day, maybe two. Sure, here you go. You want that? Done. No problem. Yeah, great. Sounds fun. Sounds terrible to me. <laughs> he thinks it's great. Wonderful. Everybody is good at what they're good at. Um, I did work with another data gentleman. Somebody, people ask me, why do people do this? Why do people give up their time? Well, why do we give up our time? Why do we do the jobs that we do? We do it because we want to make the world a better place. These are people, a lot of times they want to make the world a better place. You also get people, as I said, who are um, trying to build their portfolios. And I had one gentleman, and I like to talk about him because he was, um, spent his entire career in the Marines doing um, deep data dive analytics as part of the Marine Corps. And he's now retired from the Marines, and he went out to get civilian data jobs, and he realized that all of his work was classified. He could not talk about a single project that he had done through his entire career. And not only couldn't he talk about the content of the projects, he couldn't even talk about how he gathered the data from the projects, because even the how was confidential. So now he talks about my project. That's cool. I helped that guy. That felt good. And he helped me. So it's a very reciprocal relationship. So I'm going to show it to you a little bit about how it works. This is, and I'm going to do a screen share, so our Give me one second. Oh. Over here. All right. Can we see? Excellent. Wonderful. I love when technology works. It's going to get a little weird for me in a minute, though. Uh, there we go. Now it's going to get less weird. Ah, that was not what I wanted to do at all. 
Give me one sec. Sorry about that. I'm going to stop my screen share for a second and just get myself vaguely more organized. I apologize. My tech is usually a little bit better than this. Now if I do my screen share, I should be able to get everything I need. Now I can still see what I'm doing, which is great. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Those of you who have been in the room have been looking at it since I came in. This is what I log into. Um, and the most important thing over there, you see where my picture is? It says Becca C, executive director, there I am. And down below, you can't see it on the screen right now, but there was a little area that said my team. There's a little plus sign. And the way I add people to my team is hit the little plus sign, I put their email address in, and they now have access. They get their own account. It doesn't populate into your account, so you're not going to see everybody's projects. You're not going to be flooded with everybody's information. You're only going to see your projects. I can add people for you, but it's a lot faster if you do. If I add people, it takes about a week. If you add people, it happens instant instantaneously. So it is really the best way to do it. This is going to show you a project activity. All of your dashboard things are going to be on here. Everything you need to know about your account is right here on this dashboard. So in order to post a project, you have to decide what project you want. And I'm going to go over here. So this is the page you get to when you say post a project. It takes you to this page. And on this page, you can tell it what you need help with, but you can also see categories. So these are the different categories it's sorted projects into. Um, so you can think to yourself, oh, I really want to do a project that pertains to marketing and communications. Okay, marketing and communications. Almost everything you need to run your business is represented on here except legal support. Okay, you won't find lawyers on here who are going to help you with legal things. Yes. We provide a free pro bono clinic with the Hampton County Bar Association for 20 minute consults on legal issues because it's statewide. It's not an ongoing representation, but if you have quick questions and we can provide information, that's another service that we heard. So just know that that is where you come for legal stuff um, and happy to share that information. It's also on our website. Absolutely. And it's a great service. Just to emphasize that, it is a phenomenal service. The people who support it are terrific and we are very, very lucky to have it. Um, and for exactly the reason that Meredith mentioned, why is there no legal support on here? Legal support is very specific to where you live and these people are all over the world. So you may not be getting the best legal advice from somebody who lives in Japan. Um, not that they are trying, but they don't know. Um, and legal advice can also be very touchy. You know, and lawyers can be very sensitive about what they're willing to tell you and what they aren't. So this program here is a great program. Um, so here are just some of the types of programs that you will see here. Audio editing, branding digital assets, uh, brochure graphics. It goes on and on and on. But I'm going to pull one up for us. So I'm going to pull up, here's branded digital assets. We'll start there. I've decided I want to brand my digital assets. I don't really know what that means, but I'm sure people do if they want it. So here we are. Uh, and in order to do this, this is the information it's going to give me. It's going to tell me that it's going to take about one to two weeks to do this project. It's going to tell me the deliverables from this, what I should expect to get. Um, one of the other things that I will mention is you'll see over here, there's a button that says start with a call. If you want to just have a one hour expert phone call, you don't want to do a whole project. You're not even sure you're ready for a project. You don't even know what a branded digital asset is, but you're really interested in finding out. You hit the start with a call and you can talk to an expert for an hour. You can talk to 10 experts for an hour. However many people apply to be your expert, you can keep talking to as many people as you want until you get the information that you're looking for. Um, when we started our uh, strategic planning process, I started with a call. And the question I asked is, what are other people asking you? I said, when somebody else calls, because I don't know where I need to be, I said, what, is, what are other people asking you and what has changed in strategic planning since COVID? Those were my two big questions. And a wonderful conversation for an hour with this gentleman. Now, sometimes the people who do these hour-long phone calls will be willing to pick up a project if you decide to do a project from there. Sometimes they just want to do these hour calls, and that's fine too. Um, but it's a great feature. I also tell people it's a great feature for professional development for your staff. Um, you have a staff member who works in marketing, but they want to find out more about fundraising. Have a one hour expert phone call. That's free professional development training for your staff. No excuse, you can't, you, it's free. Great, I tell my staff all the time, you know, there's three of us, we all wear a lot of hats. If there's something on here you wanna know about, open a call and go find out. Great professional development opportunity and Catch a Fire never even thought of that until I told them about it. They're like, oh, you're right, that is great. I was like, yes, tell other people because it's a wonderful opportunity. Learn from experts. 
it, as a leader, it doesn't mean that I now have to know enough to then train my staff to do something. I'll find somebody here who can help them. All right, so we're going to keep scanning down. This is going to tell you a little bit about the right professional for the job, what you want to do, because you, you're going to interview people. You're going to post this job, and then people are going to apply. Catch a Fire does not vet people for you. This interview process is yours and yours alone. It is for you to do the vetting. They have their entire network, plus they put out every posting onto LinkedIn and Indeed. Um, they have tens of thousands of people who have registered through the site. But again, the vetting is yours. And I'll show you a little bit about how you can use the platform to help you with that. But I tell people all the time, interview the person like you were going to hire them and pay them. And if you wouldn't hire them and pay them, don't pick them. And here's why you don't have to pick them. Because right now, on this site, there are 53,628 people who have registered through this site who have the skills to do this job. Those are who are currently registered. Then it also goes out through LinkedIn and Indeed. So if you don't like the first person you interviewed, there are 53,627 other people who are potentially there. Now, not all of them are going to apply for your project. Not all of them are going to be interested. Not all of them are active. But that is a big number of people. You don't have to pick somebody just because they're the first person who walks in the door. This changes our volunteer relationship. Our relationships with volunteers is fraught, I will say. Many of us have had the experience where our volunteer is our mother's college roommates, friends, cousins, boyfriend, sister, who took a class in whatever we needed, who wants to help us. Other people in the room have that experience? Yes? Uh-huh. And then it doesn't go well. And then our mother calls and yells at us. I've had that experience. It's not great. My mom is kind of vicious. I love her, but I don't want to make her angry. These people are here to do a job. If you treat it like a job, they're going to treat it like a job. The first logos that we got from our branding expert were exactly what we asked for, and they were hideously ugly. They look like the old Howard Johnson's logo. Do you remember Howard Johnson's? Yeah, not a good look for us. Not a good look. And I was so terrified because I was going to go back and tell this man that I didn't like it, and I was used to people crying. Right? Get upset. I made a staff member go with me to the Zoom meeting so that I wouldn't check it out. And I said, oh, thank you so much for all the hard work. You know, I'm not sure it's really what we're looking for. And he said, great, it's not particularly nice. Let's move from here. And I was sort of stunned. And I said, I, I don't really understand what just happened. And he said, Becca, you hired me to create a brand that you like, not a brand that I like. My job is to give you what you asked for. OK. And then we move forward. It changes the narrative of the volunteer relationship right here. So. 53,000 people, not a bad opportunity to find several people who might be willing to help. They show you some people on the platform who have these skills, just so that you can start seeing some faces. And this, they tell you that this is a project that if you were to pay for it, it would cost you about $3,000. So when you're interviewing, keep that $3,000 number in your head. And if you wouldn't give them $3,000 to do it, don't use them. Move on. Pick another one. You'll get five to six resumes at a time. And I'll show you what those will look like. So they don't flood you either with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Okay? They send you a reasonable number. The faster you respond, the more likely the person is still going to be available. So try to respond to people quickly. If you look at somebody and say, this person is absolutely not for me, just move forward. It's a little like online dating at that point. You get to swipe right and left. I don't know which is the good and the bad, so I'll just go with right and left, to whichever one they are. Um, so if you're not interested, you just swipe in the not interested direction, or you hit the no thank you button. And that person will get an email saying, thank you so much for your time. They're going to use a different consultant. Um, if you decide you are interested in somebody, you hit the yes button. You will be given um, a calendar with times to enter five or so different times and dates that work for you for an interview. That will then be sent to the person. They'll select one of those times and dates that works for them. And at that time and date, you both will get a phone call from the platform. And it will connect you through them. You have not exchanged any personal information at this point. So if you find that you don't like the person, it's not going to work out. They don't necessarily know who you are. You don't have to have any of that awkwardness. You do the interview, and I, as I said, and I can't emphasize it enough, you interview them like you were going to hire them. And at the end of the interview, you once again go back to the online dating. Yes, I want them. No, I don't want them. If you say yes, you want them, they get an email saying they'd like to work with you. If you say no, you don't want them, once again, they get an email that says thank you for your time. They've decided to work with another consultant. They can also do that first. So you could get the email saying, yes, they want to work with you, or no, thank you, they're working with another consult or with another project. Um, 
So once you say yes or they say yes, the other one then has to agree also. Then you're connected through the platform and then you can either continue to talk to each other through the platform or you can move off the platform to additional um, places to have conversations, emails, phone, however you want to handle it. It's that easy. Um, so I want to show you analysis and, and it was a little bit different than I've ever done them before. It was great. He's very creative going in a different direction. Um, it wasn't that same, let's get out the big pieces of paper and write our strengths and we just, you know. And he said to me when we were sort of done with that, he's like, I'm really having fun with this project. Do you need any other help? And I said, well, you know, we need to now process what we learned from this. Uh, yeah, I've got time for that. I can, I can do that one more piece for you. Okay, great. So he comes back, had taken all of the data, put it all together, percentages, this, that, the other thing. I'm like, this is great. He says, well, you know, I mean, what's your next step? They said, well, next we have to do this, this, and this. Well, you yeah, know, I've, I've got time for that. Okay, great. He took us straight through the entire end of our strategic plan, including developing the plan, making it all, putting it all together. And he has become a trusted friend and confidant because this man knows as much about my business as I do at this point. He happens to be in Eastern Mass. He's the only Massachusetts uh, consultant I've worked with. Um, we're going to have coffee soon. Um, and I'm actually hoping to bring him here to Western Mass to do a breakfast event for HSF um, because I have a vision of us talking about creating a strategic plan for our region, um, how we all work together to make a plan for the region. This is my guy. <laughs> He's pretty great. Um, so he applied, I got this. It gives me a little bio. I get his experience tab, which gives me his resume. And I get his projects tab. These are catch a fire projects that he's done. So here's my SWOT analysis, which again, really is so much more than a SWOT analysis. Um, he also did this facilitated strategy session for another organization. How dare somebody do something for somebody isn't me? No, I'm kidding. Um, and what you'll see here is these little quotation marks. And these little quotation marks mean that there are testimonials that have been put in. So you want references? There they are, if they've already done projects here. You are allowed to ask them for references when you do the interviews. Treat it like somebody you would hire. Don't treat it like a volunteer. That is the piece that I implore you over and over again. And if your spidey senses are tingling that the person is not the right one for you, trust your spidey senses. There are people on this platform because there's hundreds of thousands of them who are here who might try to sell you things. If you get that sense, move on. If somebody is bothering you, if you pick the wrong person, if you don't like it, there's a little help widget that you can't see right now, but you can message Catch a Fire and they will help you take care of it. You are not stuck and you're not out any money, right? You don't even have to have the awkward conversation. They will have it for you. It's great. <laughs> I'm tired of the awkward conversation. They'll take care of it. My mom won't yell at me. We're all happy. So this is a good, good day. So this is Jeff. And right now, Jeff has done $11,660 worth of projects on Catch a Fire. Um, I have a marketing guy that I've worked with. Um, he's a graphic artist. And he has done over $100,000 of projects on Catch a Fire. His name is Benny. He's in California. He's a delight. Um, but this $11,660 is not entirely accurate because I just told you he did an entire strategic plan for us, not just the SWOT analysis. This only factors in the cost of a SWOT analysis. So many projects become even more. Our website, our, our branding didn't take into account the redesign of our website. So in the last two and a half years, HSF members have done over a half million dollars worth of projects, and that's just in recorded number. That doesn't include the bonus projects. It's a lot of support. And that half million dollars came at no cost to any single one of you, okay? So that's the important thing to remember. Um, we ourselves are a, a decent sized portion of that. Um, but we are seeing uptick in usage every time I do this. So the other piece that I will say is at the end of this, I'm going to try to have some Q&A time. I know I'm a very long-winded person. I apologize for that, but I'm really passionate about this because I think this is what will make the difference for so many of us because it's already made a giant difference for us. I'm available to each and every one of you to come to your organization, to get on a Zoom call, to physically show up, however you want this, to go through this with you individually, personally, to go through this with your staff, to go through it with your board, to go through it with your leadership, whatever I need you to do to use this, I will do that. The foundations have given me the support to be able to take my time to do that. I do not get paid by anybody to do it. <laughs> I don't work for them. I'm not a salesperson. They give me nothing other than the fact that my personal organization 
has benefited hugely from this, and everybody else should be able to. And HSF exists solely for the purpose of helping all of you. We create nothing, we make nothing, we are not a service provider. We are direct care to those of you doing direct care. So if I have this and you're not using it, it breaks my heart. Because this is amazing, this is a game changer. When foundations talk about capacity building, here it is. All of the things we would never have been able to rebrand. And our website was terrible. I took over this organization, I was embarrassed. I would never send anybody to our website. We didn't have a brochure, we didn't have a flyer, I wouldn't send people to our website. How do I tell anybody about my organization? If somebody asked me a question, the only thing I could say is, I'll come talk to you about it. The, the, the resource that we have is our time. But you run out of time really quickly. <laughs> if I can just send you to my website, well now I can because I'm proud of it. And now we're sitting here two and a half years later and my board looked at me and said, maybe we could do a web update. Maybe we could like refresh the brand. And rather than going, oh my God, how am I gonna do any of that? I went, cool, great, let's do it. Yeah, I'm in, I'm ready. Um, that's a great thing. To be able to say, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can find the data. Yes, I can have a new brand. I deserve it. You know, we do the work that we do because we believe that people have, a, everyone has a fundamental right to exist, to be human, to be here, to have the things that they need. So do your organizations. The work you do is hard, and every one of your organizations has a fundamental right to have the resources that they need to do their job and do it well. So the last thing I'm gonna show you, um, oh, I have two of them now. Okay. Is here. So then you get a project plan here. It tells you a little bit about what you should expect. So I'm just going to show you very, very quickly what happens to post a project. Because again, people say, biggest problem, I don't have time. It's going to take too long. Okay. So the first thing you have here is um, it, it assumes that your language proficiency is English. But if you need this in another language, you get to choose that language. And it will connect you with people who have proficiency in that language. This is a relatively new ad for them. We're really excited that they've done this. Um, this organization, if you look into them, their equity work is pretty great. Um, they are really working very hard to, to make sure. I mean, their whole purpose is to create an equitable space where people can have the resources they need. So um, they, are do, they are putting their money where their mouth is when it comes to this work. Go back over here because I need a keyboard real quick. So details about what you need. Things I like to point out here is that they're only asking for 500 characters. This is all quick. Um, so here I need three new logos for an event. That simple. Okay. Ooh, I need to move this up on my screen a little bit. I can now do this. I hit next. It's going to remind me of what I need to have available for this project because it doesn't want you to start a project you're not ready to do. Um, so, yep, I can do it. I'm ready. Here we go. Let me hit next. Oh, sorry. Um, we currently have a current logo, which should be easy for you to get started. And we have a uh, branding. Oh, I need to learn to spell. Branding guide. Okay, very simple answers, very short answers. Next. Um, why is this project important? Here's your heartstring tug. You know, this is, you tell them why you do what you do. This project is important because we will be able to raise funds to serve lunch to 700 more kids in the next three weeks. Whatever this is, this is the part where you tell them why this is important. I'm just going to stick some letters in there for the moment. And with this project that will save us this $3,000, what will that allow us to do? With HSF, I always say that this allows us to continue to provide low and no cost support to our member organizations. This is how I can look at all of you and say, if you need help with your membership dues, don't let that be why you do not rejoin. Just call me, we'll figure it out. Because I just saved $3,000 here. That's what we choose to do with it. So that's my answer to this question. I'm not going to type that. This is a picture I put in at the beginning when we first started doing this about two and a half years ago. These idea clouds were super popular, so this was the picture that I dropped in here. <laughs> Probably should update it at this point. They're not as popular as they used to be. Um, so, but I can change the image. Next. This is details that I, again, put in when I first set up. Interesting things about us. My picture, my title, our um, organizational logo. Next, it gives me a summary of what I just did, and then I would hit the post this project button. It's that easy. 
I am not going to post this project uh, because it would look very weird if I did. But that is how simple it is to get a project posted. You will start getting um, resumes really, really quickly, which is awesome. And then you will follow the process. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share. Look, there's our friends at home. I'm going to leave them up so you guys can see them because that's more fun. Um, yes, on time, which is good because I like talking. Um, so that is, is kind of the, the basics of it, the introduction to it. There is so much more and there are so many details I can go into and my passion for it, I think you've already heard it, but if you really set me free, I could really get into it. But I do want to leave time for questions. I want people to be able to ask things. Um, if people don't ask things, I'll keep talking. So don't you worry about that. <laughs> uh, but people online, people here, um, any questions you have? Becca, the first question that came up is, okay, so someone wants to sign up. What do they do? Yes, that is a great question. So um, what you're going to do is you're going to reach out to Meredith, who is going to send me your information. Um, I will then get you entered. And as I said, not only will you get Catch a Fire, but you will get HSF membership through the end of June. Catch a Fire will last through the end of August. At the least, that is when we're currently funded through. We, I'm going to say it with great confidence, even in this room with one of our funders sitting here. I believe that we will be continuing to provide it past that point um, because we're looking by then, we certainly will have passed over $600,000 worth of support. We're shooting for $750,000 if we could have, you know, three quarters of a million dollars of projects done in three years. That'd be pretty exciting. And we're going to do that because all of you today are going to get access to this because it's free. So there's no reason for you not to. And I am free for your support. So there's no reason not to have us too. And again, as I said, I'm not going to harass you about membership later. You will get um, requests. Just reach out to me or just sign up for membership because your membership also helps support other agencies who might need a little bit more help. Um, but that's, again, do not not get involved because you're worried about that. I want to be clear, it is not an issue, okay? Not an issue. So um, you reach out to Meredith, you reach out to myself. Um, I will put your information into the Catch a Fire system. I will also put you into our mailing list so that you'll get HSF emails. Um, if you do not want them, reach out to me and be like, can you take me off the mailing list? Or just click the take me off the mailing list button, okay? I hope you don't. We're lovely people. We try to be nice. Um, we do great programming. I'm very proud of the work that we do ourselves. It usually will take about a week from the time I get that request for it to go into the system. It takes about a week for Catch a Fire to process it through. Um, and then you will get an email from Catch a Fire with your own personalized link that will take you to your site that links you into our cohort so that it goes into this big number um, with the data so that we know that you are covered there, okay? If for some reason you don't get that email, reach back out to me and I can go through the back end and poke at my contact person and be like, hey, where's their link, okay? Um, if you think you have done this already but don't remember, I probably have your link, okay? So just, you know, if you think you've done it, let one of us know and we will make sure that I can check first um, if I have it, I will give it to you. Um, but yeah, it's that. That's it. Very easy. I just need email addresses. Um, we have a few folks who are volunteers Great. who are on. If they're interested in providing some of their services, yes. do they? Where do they go? Go to catchafire.org. So, and anyone who just wants to check it out in the meantime, catchafire.org is their website. Um, all one word: catch a fire. Um, and there is a volunteer tab on it. Um, a lot of organizations have requirements for their staff that they do a certain amount of volunteer hours, businesses, for-profits, things like that. This is great. Um, I know that Mass Mutual has partnered with Catch a Fire to create a system for their staff to sign on. So you will, if you look for local people, because you can check a button that say you want, you want somebody local, you'll see a lot of Mass Mutual people who will show up. That's why, um, because they, they have a, a partnership. Um, I have used the local button. It is helpful on certain projects. If you need to do something in person, that would be great <laughs> if they're closer. Um, but I have not had a problem working internationally. Um, as I said, I've, I've worked with a gentleman in Pakistan. I worked with a gentleman in Australia. I worked with a gentleman in Canada. Um, a lot of my consultants have been out in California with that three hour time difference. We just worked the times out. Um, my gentleman in Australia, it was actually the next day for him when we would talk, which was always a little funny. I was like, oh, you've time traveled. It's tomorrow for you. Um, and my gentleman in Pakistan, his um, internet service was better in the middle of the night for him. So he was happy to meet during daytimes for me because he got better service to connect with me 
at night, and that was when he did his volunteer projects anyway. Another question. A mm -hmm. few folks asked what does HSF do besides offer Couch a Fire? Excellent. I didn't want to take a lot of the time on that. Um, so we, as I said, we provide networking and training opportunities. Um, our trainings right now focus really heavily on supervisor trainings. So this is a multi-part series where we train people in your organizations who have been promoted into supervisor roles into how to be a supervisor. So we don't train them on topics specific to your organization. We do um, everything from equity training with them to um, employment law, to understanding insurance, to financial budgeting. You know, a lot of these people are coming in not having any of that basic information because who, where were they found it from? So they get it from us. Uh, and we also help move them from being, a lot of times we move direct care into supervisor roles. So they've gone from being peers to being bosses. And that's a big moment and change and relationship change. And so we do a lot of work around that. We do our advanced management series, which is for organizations that have um, identified potential staff to be moving up into management roles that they want to be fostering and supporting and helping along their journey. We actually just opened advanced management, I think, yesterday. Um, we do that series once a year. We do uh, supervisory series three times a year. Uh, winter is open right now. We'll be opening the spring series for supervisory soon. Um, we also do a multi-part uh, workplace uh, equity training that's about creating equitable workspaces, the cultures of equity, and it's about actual work, not just conversations. How are we gonna, you know, how do we leave this with change? You know, what action steps are we taking? What plan have we put together? Um, and then there is a round table that we have that follows up after that so that community stays together and continues to connect um, so that there's some accountability around change. You know, we can all talk about things as much as we want if we don't actually have any accountability towards it. Rarely does anything actually happen. Uh, we have a HR roundtable. Our HR directors from a lot of our member organizations get together once a month to mostly commiserate with each other about how hard their lives are because we all know that their hard lives are really hard in HR. Um, but also to share some tips and tricks and support. Uh, we used to do that quarterly. When COVID started, we started doing it weekly. Um, it went to every other week. We're now at once a month. We will stay at once a month. Uh, but they also have um, an email string. So if questions come up in between, they communicate with each other then. We do um, networking breakfast events, networking and educational breakfast events. We have one coming up, I believe, on February 13th, um, which is the topic is the use of AI in the nonprofit human service world. Um, so it should be really, really interesting. It's a great breakfast event. We do those a few times a year. Um, that is being held um, in... Where are we? We're in, uh, at Mount Holyoke College at the Will Tallowell Center there. It's great. Their food is delicious. Um, and so we do have the, there's usually an educational component and a networking component. Um, and we have our legislative reception, which is actually this Friday. Um, this year it is virtual again. Um, registration is technically closed for that, but if any of you have not registered and you want to, if you reach out to me directly, um, I will be sitting on my couch tonight doing the most complicated wedding seating chart ever to get people seated with their legislators. So it's not too late for those of you who are in this room. It is too late for everybody else because I am too tired for that. Uh, but if you are here and you reach out to me directly and you want to go, um, we're happy to, to, I'm happy to figure out how to get you um, in with one of your legislators. Um, and then we also do team building trainings and other trainings that we send off to your organizations directly so you can come to one of our trainings or we do what we refer to as our a la carte programming where we will bring trainings to your organization. Um, so I think that's it. One more question. If you yes. can repeat, so people have caught on that HSF membership will be free yes. through when? Through the end of June. That's right. our fiscal year. So that's our membership year. So at this point, it is through the end of June. Um, and then at that point, our membership dues are based on uh, your budget sizes. Um, our smallest members get, it's, it ranges from $200 up to just short of $3,000. So just to get a sense of, we try to keep our membership costs really reasonable um, because we do want to make it possible for people. But again, if, the, if you're coming into me and saying, we don't have $200 this year to do it, but we've got $50, Okay, let's talk. We'll figure it out. You know, I, you don't gate keep community. So we figure out how to make it work. Um, and that's one of the pieces that's really important. As, as we've done all of this equity trading, it was time for us to put our money where our mouths were also. And keeping people out because of, you know, 
It's not the way we had an organization come to us the other day with a nine thousand dollar budget. We got nine thousand dollars, so. I'm reaching out. I have Meredith's email. What is your? Email? Sure, I am R, the letter R, Kulong, C O O, L O N G, at humanserviceforum.org. And Meredith can certainly send that out as well. Uh, R, the C O O, L O. N G at humanserviceforum.org. We are hopefully someday going to get something shorter than humanserviceforum.org, uh, but right now that's still where we are. I want HSFMA, like that seems like way cooler, uh, but we're working on that. <laughs> and I am happy to answer any questions if you email me, any questions about this, any questions about us. Um, my 14-year-old son, when I took this job, he was seven. My husband works in a factory. He works on the, the floor. He builds things. They actually made the freezers that all the COVID vaccines went in, so that was pretty cool. Um, my son looked at me when I took this job, and he said, what do you make it work? I was like, I don't make anything. It's a weird question. I was like, but, you know, dad goes to work. He makes stuff. There's things. And I thought about it for a really long time because I try to give answers when I can. And sometimes they're snarky, and sometimes they're not. Um, and I went back to him about two days later, and I said, I make friends at work. And he, in his very 80-year-old, seven-year-old way, looked at me and went, that's a job. <laughs> and I said, right? You know, who knew? Um, who knew that was a job? But it is, and I am the luckiest person in the world to have the coolest job in the world. Because I get to do this. I get to tell you guys about stuff like this. I get to talk to all of you. I get to make new friends. Um, I love talking to strangers. It's a miracle I don't get kidnapped. Uh, but they've returned me because I talk a lot. <laughs> um, but I really do love what I do. I love to connect people to other people. Um, I love to find people resources. I love to figure out how I can help organizations work with other organizations to get their needs met because resource scarcity is a problem. And it is the root, in my opinion, of all of the problems that we have in this field. And all of the tension that we feel amongst organizations. I have two large organizations where their leadership will not sit at tables together. I won't, I won't name who they are, but they won't. And that's a problem, because we're all doing good work. And I am of the belief, and I will stand here in front of all of you, and I will tell you that I'm of the belief that this resource scarcity narrative was designed to promote inequity in our communities. Okay? I feel very strongly that we are, even in the best of our intentions, are part of a system of inequity. The best way for us to fight out of that to stick it to those who want to keep us there, is to say, mm, this narrative doesn't actually make sense for us anymore. And we have ways around it. And partnerships that involve sharing resources and not splitting resources. Because we've had that happen. Well, now you need a partner to get what you had before. Now you get half of what you had. But play nice. <laughs> Money is scarce. We know that. It doesn't have to be. But that's a whole other situation. And I, you know, I am perpetually grateful for the funders that we have in this area who are trying to do their best with their limited resources and are trying to do their best to come up with things like this. You know, HSF doesn't traditionally apply for grants because I don't reach my hand into my members' pockets, right? You guys need the money. I don't, you know. But this was different because this was me applying for grants to give something to you guys. And the return on investment is already almost twice what we've invested. The more of us who use it, that return on investment just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. And it shows our foundations and our supporters and our, you know, who have done this incredible work to help bring this here for us, that they've invested well in something that is starting to break down systems. When everybody has the same access to support. When an organization like mine, that at the time we started this project, we were just short of a $300,000 organization, can do a $30,000 project without batting an eye. That's pretty amazing. That's equity. And that's our standing up as a unit, as a community, and saying we are not accepting this narrative of scarcity anymore. This narrative is what is keeping our people from being able to unmarginalize. It is what is keeping the competition going because groups not coming together keeps the people who do not want us working together very, very happy. And if we are fighting for resources, we're not going to come together. Um, 
I, many years ago, found myself snorkeling in piranha-infested waters. Nobody told me. Would have been nice. Something to mention before I got in the water. And I got out of the water and I found out there was piranha everywhere. And I went, that probably terrible. And I talked to a marine biologist and they said, no, you were fine. You were fine the entire time. You were never in any danger. And I said, why? And they said, because you're so much bigger than the piranha. I said, but you hear about piranha eating people, eating cows, eating things. And they said to me, piranha eat things that step into tide pools that they get trapped in when there is drought. When they're in the ocean, there is plenty of food. They're not resource scarce. They don't frenzy. When the resources become scarce, that's when they frenzy and when they will go after anything that comes near them in the hopes of survival. We can stop being piranha. But we're taught to be piranha. We have to stand up for our people, the people that we help, so we're going to grab every resource we can get a hold of because there's limited ones out there until we find resources like this until we figure out how to partner together in a way that isn't about sharing the money on something, but sharing expertise. I now know how to do this, so my job is to go out and teach all of you how to do this. And the foundation said, yes, we're gonna support HSF in taking this thing they learned how to do and learned how to do well, because I've done 20 projects, and teach you guys how to do it. Right after the, the February 13th breakfast, I'm going out to MCS, they've invited me to come and meet with their entire executive team and do this with our team, so that we can get all of them doing it. I will do that for any one of you, for a single organ, one person in their garage doing great things to big giant ones. I want you all doing this because this matters. So. That was the passion piece. I really like this. So. <laughs> Plus it's fun. That's the other side of it. It's really fun to do projects and go, oh my God, look what I can do. So. One thing that I want to emphasize that's coming up, especially on Zoom, which is, um, does this work for really, really small organizations? And I would say yes. the answer is yes. Becca, Becca corrected me that they are now a three-person organization, but Huge. you used to be a one. We did. You used to be a one-person organization did. with some of these projects. Right. I think especially it's helpful, and I would just underscore what Becca said, which is that um, sometimes we don't we don't have the time, but you also don't have the time to not do some of these projects. Getting in the habit of doing that. And that's where Becca can really help you okay. with those projects. Let One of the other you. requests is as more users come on board mm -hmm. is to be able to, if we can share organizations that are successfully using mm -hmm. HSF, so you also might be able to talk to a peer in a sector, a similar sized organization, and say, what was your experience like? Absolutely. Um, to be able to share you know, other stories of, of how it works. Absolutely. And if somebody has developed a resource or something that they learn from it or some way of doing something, they are happy to share those things as well. We definitely have organizations who will do that. Um, they also, in our cohort, will put up um, their testimonials and things like that, so it, it's pretty awesome. Great. And yes, Catch a Fire was actually designed for small orgs. Um, HSF is one of the, the groups that is teaching them that big orgs can use it too. They actually didn't think they were for big orgs, but they forgot that programs in big orgs function like small orgs. And I am happy to hang out here, uh, probably eat a Danish, drink more of my coffee, and uh, answer any questions. You know, those of you who are online certainly can ask there still too. People in the room um, about any topic. If I know something about it, I'm happy to answer. Awesome. And likewise, community staff, we are around happy to answer questions. And um, in full transparency, coming out of COVID and a big uh, staff hiring at Community Foundation, there are a lot of us new folks. And we're trying to figure out what other capacity building and trainings, whether it's resources we can bring or it's organizations that have succeeded or had challenges in certain areas and share with each other. So if you have ideas about programs and topics that you'd like to see, HSF is certainly one of our big partners on that, the other funders as well. But please don't be shy about reaching out. Sometimes we'll be able to say, that's a great idea, we're going to think on it. And sometimes the answer is, oh, yeah, no, we can do something. We can connect you. So please. Or sometimes um, we already are. That's right. That is true. Yes, actually, that's happening tomorrow. You should right. be there. Um, and then the big thank you to the other two, uh, Community Foundation, yes. obviously, for hosting this today and for being a big driver of this. Uh, but the Davis Foundation and the Beverage Family Foundation uh, continue to be partners and supports. So. I have a question. Yeah. What are some hardships that you guys face, and how, how are you guys able to overcome that? Yes. So, um, the, the lack, uh, well, one of the biggest ones that we all have, being able to pay my staff well um, and for the work that they do. That is one of the big hardships that we have. So it's hard to maintain staff when you can't pay them what they are worth. Um, and as a three-person organization, everybody is wearing a zillion hats. And so I got to this point as a leader where I'm like, I can't keep throwing things onto these people. They are already doing more than what they're being paid for. And they will keep doing it gladly because we really like working together. It's a great team. 
but morally, I'm, I'm at a point where I can't do that anymore. It's not right. So how do I figure out how to get some of the things off their plates? Um, my next big step is actually right now in our organization, those 20 projects were all done by me. Thank you. <laughs> but I want my staff doing them. You know, so I've, I've taken things from them that I now do here. I want them to start feeling empowered to say, wait, I do this thing, but I don't want to do this thing anymore. I'm going to go over here. Um, and I actually, I'm my least technological person on my staff. She and I are starting a project for her um, very, probably next week uh, because she needs to do that. But she needs me to help her get started, um, even though she's been watching me do it for two and a half years. So that, you know, that, that ability to, to care for my staff the way I want to is one of my biggest challenges. Um, and my ability to be able to provide resources for my members as their needs grow, I want to keep, keep being able to do that. And so I keep finding ways and partners. And again, you know, partnering with Community Foundation around programs. You guys say you need a program. You know, they've got this beautiful space. We have the capacity to run the program. We do this together. So you know, those are those ways we don't necessarily have to share the dollars. We have to share the resources. Does that answer the question? Yeah. You mentioned big and small orgs. Mm -hmm. Is it mostly C3s and C4s? So it is, this is intended really for um, really any nonprofit to be able to use Catch a Fire. Um, I know it's not up on the screen anymore. I keep pointing here, but that's because it was for a long time. So I'm just going to keep pointing at it anyway. Um, as I said, I just signed up an organization the other day that has a $9,000 budget. I also have people at CHD, BHN, and Bay State Health who use this platform. So I have an organization that really has no budget. They're entirely volunteer. They do the best that they can. They have this now. Something. It'll help them get there. There's fundraising help on here. People who will help you do that. You know, a $9,000 organization, as wonderful as they are, and they are, they know that they need to grow. They can't stay at $9,000. They have three people who are, are volunteering their time to run this, this thing, and it's a great thing. And good for them that they're now getting some resources to hopefully help them get that growth that they need in order to continue to survive, because the work they're doing is extraordinary, and they deserve the right to exist. All right, so with that, I think that we are Good, and I am right on time. You are right on time. Yes. I'm so, so, so proud of myself. Becca, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today.